Should teenagers today have easier access to birth control? A Massachusetts school district with one of the highest teen pregnancy rates in the state thinks so. School committee members in the city of Lynn recently voted to give the district's high school students availability to condoms, birth control pills, as well as emergency contraception upon request. As I mentioned earlier, Dr. Daphne Duke joins us again to talk about this hot topic. What is your stance when it comes to birth control for teens and access? Absolutely. This is a huge topic. Three out of 10 American teens will become pregnant by the age of 20 in the United States. So that's 30% of girls. So it's really a huge thing going on right now. As pediatricians, our job is to basically recommend to teens abstinence. So no sex is safe sex. Because we're such a huge part of their lives, we do definitely talk about some of these topics in our office. So I basically discuss no sex, we talk about alcohol, drugs, their emotions, and everything is done in a very much confidential manner, oftentimes with parents not being in the room, because we want to develop that bond and trust between us and the patients. They're giving us some of their most intimate moments, and we definitely need to be there guiding them through it all. So talking about things such as sexually transmitted diseases, pregnancy, having kids, that all comes in our office visit. And we're actually able to prescribe uh, birth control control pills and plan B, for example, and also medications to treat the sexually transmitted diseases straight to the adolescent without having the parent involved. What is your stance in terms of schools getting involved? Because some schools are better than others yeah. with both sex education and certainly in, in this case, the Massachusetts school saying, look, we're not only going to have an openness about this, but we're going to make birth control available, condoms available. Where do you draw the line? Yeah, I completely understand. A lot of it is parents are actually afraid of having this information given to their kids because they think that here, this is okay. You can have sex. If I give you a condom, then it's fine. So they are worried that their kids are going to become more promiscuous and more likely to have sex and have sex at an earlier age. And so definitely research has been done on this topic where they would do school-wide comprehensive sex education and contraceptive programs. And basically what they found is that all these worries are not true. Kids are not going to have more, more likely to have more sex when they're at a younger age or more with frequently education and the with whole the package. education involved. So I'm totally pro this and I totally am total agreement. I think this is wonderful. Better to give them knowledge. And what has yep. been shown is that when they do receive this knowledge, the age of onset is delayed and there's less pregnancies. So in 2017, there were near 200,000 pregnancies um, between the ages of 15 and 19, and that's a huge number. So if we can prevent that, I'm all for it. I don't want a teenager being pregnant at yeah. the It's, it's all, all about education, yeah. not just for the teenager, but for the parents. I'm just wondering, question, you're having the discussion with, with teenagers in your office. At what age do you, do you start that process? So just around the age of 11, 12, 13, when we're talking about puberty, is when I talk about their bodies changing, and they're after 13 and up, we actually delve into the more confidential questions. And I think that's really important that there's sort of these stages of this conversation. And for those parents who are worried out there, avoidance doesn't make the problem go away. You avoid the conversation, they're still gonna get exposure from their peers. And what I love about this is that you're pairing education with resources. So programs like this, the school is providing resources after the education. And it's just another place that the kids can go to because they may not feel comfortable going to their parents. So if they can go to the school nurse and have an educated conversation around that and then take those decisions, I think that's great, but it shouldn't be a free-for-all. I do believe that there should be a little bit of a vetting process. A school nurse should have these conversations with these teenagers before something is dispersed. And if you're not having the conversation with your kid or the kid's not having the conversation with the pediatrician or the school nurse, they're very likely getting a lot of their information from peers and online. Right, it is much better to be very proactive Teach them what they need to know. Don't expect them to just go online and, oh my gosh, I found out this, that, and the other, because half the time that information is terrible and unsafe. Dr. Dude, thank you so much.